All right, so here are the rules for working through polynomials, and we're going to add these guys up. So uh, these are just some of the different steps that you can take. You can add them. All right, you can add one polynomial to another. You can subtract a polynomial from another. You can multiply those guys together, and you can divide them. Now, when you divide, pay attention down here, because in this case right here, g of x cannot equal zero. So when you work these guys out, what you're going to end up with is 5x plus x plus 2. Okay, there's f plus g. Well, what is that? Uh, you put together the things that are the same, and you just combine all the like terms. Okay, so that's going to be 6x plus 2. What about when you subtract? Well, when you subtract, it's the same steps. And when you subtract, make sure that you always include parentheses. Because what you're really doing is 5x minus x plus 2, which is going to be 4x plus 2. Okay? When you multiply, it's going to be the same, same thing that you've done in the past. So it's just going to be 5x times x plus 2, and you just distribute that guy all the way through. 5x squared plus 10x. And then when you divide, you're going to have uh, 5x divided by x plus 2. And that's really all that you can do on this one, and we just need to remember that x cannot be equal to negative 2. So there's your rules and some basic examples of how they go. Okay, so here's some more examples of adding together two polynomials. We would have 4x to the 1 half plus negative 9x to the 1 half. And since these two guys are the same, what we can do is factor out the 4 and 9. So I would have 4 minus 9 times x to the 1 half. Okay, no problem. Well, what is 4 minus 9? It's just negative 5. So I would have negative 5x to the 1 half. And that's, that's all you need to do on that guy. Uh, we've put together the like terms. And uh, so what would the domain be? Well, the domain would be uh, all the numbers that you could put in for x. And remember, x to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of x. So our, our domain would go from 0 to infinity. Okay. So what about subtracting these guys? You're going to take the exact same steps. So I have 4x to the 1 half minus negative 4, negative 9 x to the 1 half and the, again, these are like terms because I have x to the 1 halves. So I'm going to have 4 plus 9 times x to the 1 half, which would be 13x to the 1 half. And again, keep in mind that x to the 1 half is going to determine our domain, and this is the square root of x. And so again, with this domain, it would be basically all the positive numbers plus 0. So your domain would be from 0 to infinity. OK, so here's another example using multiplication and division now. And again, you're just going to take 6x times x to the 3 fourths. And these two bases right here are the same. So you're going to do 1 plus 3 fourths to get a new exponent, and that's going to be 4 fourths plus 3 fourths, which is 7 fourths. So my number here is going to be 6x to the 7 fourths power. And so when you're looking at the domain uh, of all of these, you have to look at the domain of the pieces here that you have. and um, with x, it's all real numbers, okay? The domain of just the x is all real numbers. But 
this one is going to have some restriction because we're looking at a fourth root, and that's going to be positive numbers only. And so when you come down here for the domain, then the domain on the sky is going to be from zero uh, to infinity because we have a lim we're limited by g of x. When you do your division, you're going to end up with uh, 6x over x to the 3 fourths. And now since you're dividing, you're going to subtract your exponents. So we're going to have 6x, but now instead of uh, you know 1 and 3 fourths, we're going to we're going to take our 1 and subtract 3 fourths. And so this is going to be 4 over 4 minus 3 over 4, which is 1 fourth. And so that's going to be my new exponent here. And again, looking at the domain on this guy, uh, we want it to be uh, all positive numbers for the same reason that the first problem was, from 0 to infinity. However, um, we just need to pay attention to make sure that there's no way that we would get a 0 in the denominator. And um, if, we, if we check this initial 0 right here in the problem that we originally wrote down, we will have a 0 in the denominator. And so because of that, then, we can't say that 0 is included. Okay? And this is a, uh, a mistake that will get you on a test. So we would say we would go from 0 to infinity, but we would not include the 0. Okay, so function composition, that's the next part. And this can be a little bit confusing at first, but once you get the pattern going, everything should work out really well. But basically, a function composition is when you take something like f, f of g, okay? f of g of x, it's a function going from, uh, working from the inside out. So you want to take the g function and put it inside the f function. Or you could have g of f, okay? which would be g of f of x, which is going to be the f of x function inside the g of x function. Okay, It looks, it looks really strange, but it's, it works itself out. So the domain is going to be the set of all x values such that x is in the domain of f and f of x is in the domain of g. So we've got to use things that can work in both. All right. So let's go ahead and look at the, some examples here. We've got f of g of x. I've got f right here. I'll write him in green. And I've got g right here. I'll write him in red. Okay. So if I do f of g, I'm going to have 4 times something to the negative 1. And that something is my g. So everywhere I see the x, the g goes in its place on this very first guy. All right. And what does this end up being? It ends up becoming 4 over. 5x minus 2. And so now when we look at the domain of, of this guy, we just need to be careful because you cannot have 0 in the denominator. And what will give you a 0 in the denominator? Um, five ha uh, 2 fifths. So you can't use 2 fifths. So that's all there is to it. Uh, don't let this be a super uh, challenging, super hard type of thing. It is different. You'll need to pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it is doable. Let's see, I was trying to get these guys to move over just a little bit. All right, so let's look at the next one, f of f. Now, that's, that's really strange. And so when you're looking at f of f, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take the function f and put it in for itself. And this is going to look a little weird, but I'm going to have 4 times something to the negative 1, and that something's my variable. And in this case, it's the actual function of f, which is 4x to the negative 1. So what do we do now? Well, go ahead and distribute that negative 1 on the outside into all those guys on the inside. And then uh, when you simplify this, uh, you're going to end up with um, 4 times 
x squared over 4. And so the 4's will cancel and just leave us with x squared. And again, just like with the first problem, we need to check what the original domain is. And in that original domain, we could not use, just like in this first guy, that should say not equals, x cannot equal 0. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we would have division by zero, and, and that's that's no good. So keep that in mind. Uh, and if it helps, write this a little bit differently as four over x, so that you can see what's going on. It might help a little bit also. On that last guy, g of f, we're going to take our g function now. Five times something minus two, and we're going to put f into it. That's 4x to the negative 1. <coughs> so when I look at this guy, then I'm going to have 5 times 4 over x minus 2, which is 20 over x minus 2. And again, just like with the previous problem, we look for um, domain restrictions. And again, the only restriction on this is going to be that x cannot be equal to 0. So that's using the f of g and g of f uh, as what's called a function composition. And it takes a little practice. All right, in the last couple of examples here using composition, if I've got uh, g of f of f, uh, g of f of x, and again, I'll do only green and red, then what I've got is g2 times something squared with the f now, and f takes that place, 3 times x minus 8. All right, and then, and then what they're telling us is 5 takes the place of x. Okay, so we're going to evaluate this at 5. So I can actually take this x out, and I can put a 5 in its place. And so now when I work this out, I've got 2 times 15 minus 8 squared, which is 2 times 7 squared, which is 2 times 49, which is 98. Do the same exact things on the next problem going to have 3 times something minus 8, and that something is g, which is 2x squared, but now the x is going to be replaced with 5. So I'm going to take this guy out right here, and I'm going to put a 5 in its place. that 5 needs to be blue, doesn't it? Let's just make it blue. Alright, so now I start working this guy out. So this is going to be 3 times 2 times 25 minus 8, which is going to be 3 times 75 minus 8. I'm sorry, 50, not 75. Which is 150 minus 8, which is 142. So they're going to equal different things. You've, you've got to really pay attention. But again, it's, it's not bad, and you can check yourself on your calculator. 